so this is where I work and today we're going to be talking about implementing a server here to solve some of the problems we have. Hey guys, so if you're an aspiring director, entrepreneur, developer, or anything related to technology, then I have an awesome deal for you. A .tech domain. I've got one, and so do many other people, like Andrew from GearLive or Edgar from TechSource. Now, a .tech domain will help you stand out in a sea of boring .com and .nets and give you a memorable name that people will want to check out. So go ahead and use the promo code JACK1 at www.get.tech to get your first year of your .tech domain for just $4.99. That's the cost of a frap at an ice cream shop. So go ahead, check out the link in the description for more info. So what we're gonna be trying to do is identify the problems that we have here and then solve them by implementing a server. Well, what I know from the problems we do have is that we have two computers with all the mission critical data. You'll be seeing those two computers on screen now. And mission critical data is data that without, you'd fail. And if anything happened to these two computers, we'd fail. We'd be sent back months and months without any of the super important data we need to operate on a daily basis. And so by implementing the server, we hope to have nightly backups occur. Let's check out the infrastructure and see what we need to do to make this happen. All right, and so here behind me, we have the whole server set up for this place, and there's no server in it at the moment. But what it consists of is a mess of wires, which I will be fixing along with a uh, router, a modem, uh, the DVR for the security cameras, and a UPS. Now the plan originally was to build a server from scratch, but my boss didn't want to spend a bunch of money, which is understandable. We had this computer laying around, which is fairly recent. It has a Intel Pentium dual core CPU with four gigabytes of RAM in it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna upgrade this in part two of the video to eight gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive or greater, possibly uh, as big as four terabytes, and a 240 gigabyte SSD. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing this on a shelf in here. Unfortunately, this is not a standard server chassis, so it wouldn't be able to mount in there with much ease unless we got a shelf. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead, re-cable manage everything, and then hook this up directly to the one gigabit router switch. Now from there, we're gonna go ahead and install Windows Server 2016. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the computers and see what we would need to do from there. So this is the front office computer. This is hooked up over the network with ethernet, just like the other computer is. This has a 500 gigabyte hard drive in it. Uh, however, because it, there's no games or anything like that, it's all Word documents and Excel spreadsheets, uh, and a couple of Photoshop documents, we don't really have to worry about file size as most of them are fairly small. The entire um, drive, this computer's been in use for five or six years now, uh, and it only has about 100 gigabytes used, uh, a little bit less actually. Uh, and so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create a new network drive that not only will these computers have a full image done every night or potentially every other night, and we'll keep a backup of, of about a week. So if something goes wrong, we'll have you know a day old, two days old, three days old to go off of. And from there we can restore it, but we're also gonna have a nice large storage partition uh, that we're gonna use the SSD to cache so that it will be sped up to uh, reach you know, reasonable speeds to transfer over the network, uh, as well as upgrading both of these computers to the latest version of Windows 10. There's a phone call. Now once everything's upgraded to Windows 10, the entire network uh, will be more secure than it is previously. This is not on the creator's update, although this computer uses Windows 10. However, this computer is using Windows 7, so that's quite old. I actually built this computer here when I first started working here, and uh, unfortunately, it stayed at Windows 7. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna upgrade that to Windows 10, whether or not the people using the computer likes it, uh, and that is to just keep it secure from any modern viruses. Uh, from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the server 
to make all the printers on the network connected. That way there's no more trying to print to one printer that won't print for some reason. You can just print to any of them and go pick it up at one or another. Uh, from there, we'll be pretty much done this project. It'll be simple and straightforward, but fix many of the problems we encounter here every day, and hopefully speed up the workflow, meaning if this computer is being occupied, you can simply walk to the computer in the other room and pick up your work where you left off. So in part two, we'll go into further detail of how to set all this up. We'll be upgrading the computer, implementing it. In part three will be the final review of how it's impacted the workflow here after about a month or so. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, drop a like down below. If you didn't like it, drop a dislike. And if you really did, make sure to subscribe at the little notification icon so you get notified whenever I upload a video. And don't forget to leave a comment down in the description below. Not in the description, but below the description in the comment section. And let me know what you'd like to see in a future video. Until next time, peace out.